Hello everybody, it's Daniel. Thanks for joining. This is part five of Android Studio 4.0. Uh, we're working on a grocery delivery app. In this tutorial, we're going to, um, we already have the list here. In this tutorial, we're gonna make it so when you click on an item, say the fourth item, it'll actually pass the ID of the item to the next screen where we can customize it with the correct picture. So if I were to click on the Vegan Nom Burrito, it'd take me to the Vegan Nom page. If I were to click on Tofu Scramble, it take me to Tofu Scramble. And this is, isn't quite finished, but I was just playing around with it a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna go ahead and close everything. I was playing around with it, but everything works fine. Um, now, if you wanna follow along uh, using Google's, Google's tutorial on the uh, Android developer website, you can do that. Um, I have the URL here. I kind of copied and pasted a couple of the essential things and I'll paste all this in the notes if you just want to kind of get a little cheat sheet of what you need to do. This URL will be in the notes. First we need to do is um, uh, let's go into our adapter and instead of just uh, on the on click there when we click on the main photo, instead of just clicking and going to a fragment, we're going to actually pass maybe the name of the food item. We're gonna do that using navigation components. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this because I never remember to type it all out. There's really no point. This goes in our Gradle. Uh, there are two Gradles. Um, there's the module one, there's also the build one, and I'm in the Android mode here. Uh, so we're gonna go inside of, I think it's the project one, and it should go inside of dependencies. I think it should go right there. I think that's what my note says anyways, yeah. That's where the, the dependencies go. Not to be confused with other dependencies down there, which we'll get to maybe later. Uh, close that. So we have, uh, we pasted that in, and we're gonna get a prompt to sync. Let's not sync quite yet. One more thing we need to do. I think we need to do uh, this. And again, I just copy it from that URL. No need to memorize it. Um, and this goes inside of our module, I think, at the top. Yeah, I just put it with those. Um, looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and um, sync. And this will pull in all the Gradle files that we need, kind of get our project ready. And I think it's done. Did it work? Hide notification, I don't know. Dialog, it worked. Or there's actually another, if you wanna sync it manually, it should give you the option there. But if in every case you modify something and it doesn't sync or whatever, get rid of that. Uh, you can always hit one of those things, that button. That'll sync the file. So it's the same thing. If you if that goes away, um, yeah, we can do that. Okay, cool. Um, so next step is, let's actually do this. Let's go inside of our navigation components, uh, res navigation nav uh, graph, and we have a couple of views here. Uh, let's just go into design. Let's click on our product info class, and we want to pass the ID of the like say the position, the zero item, the first item there, we wanna pass the first item to the next screen. That's gonna be a number. Let's go inside of arguments and let's call this product, uh, let's call this um, product ID argument. And this one is going to be an integer. So a number, it could be, you know, one, nine, whatever. We'll make the default to zero actually. Actually, just for clarity, what I'll do is I'll make it nine, I'll make it, um, uh, let me get 555 just to get some random number in there. So if we see 555, we'll know it's the default value, just for clarity. Um, uh, I do some things like this just for clarity. And that looks good, go ahead and hit OK. If we select it, we can see we have the argument there. Um, and that should all work. And in some cases we may need to make it, but I think it might just work for us. Uh, we've already synced Gradle. Let's go back to my little cheat sheet. So what do we need to do next? Um, so the way we pass uh, the, let me, let me first open up the restaurant adapter. Um, instead of doing, uh, navigating to an ID like that, what we can do is we should be able to do, I think, um, product info, I think it was R, it was R I think, yeah, uh, I thought it was directions. Yeah, it was directions. Oh, first, sorry. Oh, sorry. So there are a couple of things. I always get confused. So there's actually um, how to describe it. So if you'll notice our, let me zoom in there. So if you notice what navigation components does is it takes the class, uh, whatever you have, for example, first fragment, first fragment there, that's what it's called. And it adds, um, in some cases, it'll add directions or args. 
args is what um, the receiving class takes. Directions is what you want to navigate with. So in this case, you want to actually navigate with it. So we're on the first fragment. So I think we can just do, um, let's do first frag. And if it doesn't work, um, it should work. You can always go to build, make project, or the nuclear ob or the nuclear route of just rebuilding the project. It should just work for you. I'll go ahead and put a dot, and we'll see our, um, we have a default value, so I think that's what it is. We want to actually pass an ID there. So we can pass in, um, you know, our number there. In this case, we can actually pass in, I think, food item dot, actually, we don't have a, we have an ID. No, we the price. No, we didn't do an ID. Um, what we could do is we could quickly add an ID inside of here. So we could do, you know, val um, ID int. That could be our identifying ID. Um, I didn't put one in here. I'll do that in the next video or maybe at the end of this video. For now, we'll just hard code it to a number. Actually, we could put in the, uh, we could, we could put in the position. Ideally, what you want to do is you want to use something unique. So not necessarily the position of it here. Uh, maybe uh, inside of a food item, maybe you actually do have, can I do that? Maybe you do have like a um, product SKU or something. And that would be, you know, the default. And that would usually look like, you know, um, just look something like that. You know, something unique. Maybe not that long, but like, you know, like um, vegan, you know, now, just something unique that you know is not going to be used elsewhere. Because if you have, you know, multiple vegan tacos, it's going to get confused. Uh, the app's not going to know which vegan taco to go to. Again, getting way ahead of myself. We'll fix that later. Close that. Uh, close that too. Um, we'll just pass in. Uh, we'll pass in eight because that's a good number. Um, uh, but ideally, just for clarity, you do food item dot and then whatever, you know, the name or skew or whatever. Uh, or simplify maybe, there we go, eight. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a variable and I think most people call this an action. So we'll do uh, action. We could inline it, but that works. So we have a variable there. It's not being used. Let's put it inside of here. Uh, let's get rid of our ID and let's go ahead and put our action there. It should take it with no problem. And it does. So now we're successfully passing the eight here into our uh, two, I can see, product info. And that's an auto-generated class from nav components. Let's go inside of product info. And I think it's basically what we do is at the top we do val args. Um, I, think it's, I, think you have to, I think you have to type it. I think we did that in the product info. And you'll notice our class is product info. Nav components automatically adds args to the end. Uh, I think we do by like nav args or something like that. And we don't need to type it. It'll be inferred from Kotlin, I think, or from the extension function or, you know, whatever. That works. So we have it. And if I go to my cheat sheet, you'll see, yeah, it's basically what we need to do. Um, we've done all of that. The last step is to actually do something with it. So we have access to our args. We could use it here by, you know, doing the, there's a way we could do it there. Or we can just do like, I think it's on view created. Um, that'll get triggered once the layout is already inflated. I think that's the order. And so now here we can just do, um, let's go to our product info. We have, um, it's called product title. So we can just go in here and do product title dot text. And now we have access to our args variable up at the top there. We put a dot and you'll see we have product ID argument. And for clarity, that is the same thing we added. We can name that anything. We just named it product ID argument args there. We could name it ASDF and it, you know, oops, don't want to do that. But that needs to match. Uh, whatever you put there, obviously. And um, the text there is looking for a string, and this is an integer, or really. So what we can actually do is we'll just, um, we'll kind of cheat, we'll do to string. Uh, oops, we'll do, that'll like um, kind of cheat, you don't. This, for debugging, this is fine. It'll, it'll at least output the number that we sent there, hopefully from here on the click. 
to our product info. And this will be our SKU here in, a, in the next video maybe. So we can actually do, oh, this is you know the peanut butter sandwich or the, uh, the strawberry smoothie or the latte or the lasagna or the scrambled eggs or whatever. Milk. I'm gonna go ahead and run this and uh, open up the emulator. Um, and let's see, I think this should work. We'll find out. So it hasn't crashed so far. If it does, you can always go to Logcat or Build or so. Depending on Logcat usually, if there's an issue with the emulator, um, you can go to Build. Generally, if, if the app opens, if the app opens up and then closes immediately, always open up Logcat and see what the error is there. Uh, let's just see if this works. I'm gonna click on the image and it actually works. So it gave us the eight there. Um, hey, I wanna do something really quick. Uh, let's go ahead and change this. Um, so if you go to our product info, um, our data class, or our food item actually, we have a um, we have a name. We'll just pass a string just to show you what another data type looks like. And in reality, a product SKU or whatever you wanna call it, the unique identifier might be a, a, a string. Um, uh, depending upon how you do this, you may wanna use an integer, kinda of depends upon how big it is, how many items you have. This works for now. Let's go back to our nav graph. And so we have something to pass. Let's change this to, we'll do it, um, uh, we'll do product name argument. We'll change that to a string actually up. Uh, we'll make the defaults, no we won't. Okay, so we have that saved. And if you go here, we may need to make the project for this to work. And that's something you, yeah, I don't think it's going to, so, so if you put your mouse there, it's still looking for a product ID argument. I think we changed that successfully to string, and we did. So we just need to uh, probably just make the build. So I go to build, make project, and um, it should give us an error immediately, and it does. Because we changed it from a, we go here, under an argument, click there, kind of takes us to there. We can see the error. Um, it's the integer does not conform to a string. Um, it's, it's accepting a number. Uh, it has a number there, but it's expecting a string. We can change that to, uh, you know, Daniel, and that gets rid of the error. Um, so that's good. But we also are accepting it in the product info and actually the name changed, so that's also an issue. So that doesn't even exist on there. If it's red and it says unresolved, that means it doesn't even exist on there. You can just delete it. Put a dot and you can see the new argument or the new, the new variable on there is product name argument. We changed it to name and we don't need to cast it to, to string because it should already be a string. It lets us know it's grayed out. Um, alt enter, remove that, there we go save and run and this should give us our uh, title from the adapter to okay so i'm going to click on tofu scramble and it didn't pass it i uh, will debug this together so vegan breakfast platter it still says daniel so why is it saying daniel i screwed something up oh i know what i did i hard coded it here so um yeah that's one way to debug you kind of go backwards like um well, I could show you the debugger. But like if, yeah, we'll just change it. But it's obviously, and also sometimes if you get some kind of error like that, you can always search your source code. You can do uh, shift uh, command F and do Daniel or whatever. And you can like easily find out. So in some cases, this will help you know where it is. So if I search for this, I can see all the files here. There are only four of them and I see one of them is Daniel. So that's probably where it is. This one is a README, that's there. It's a, it's, oh, it's another README and that's that. So it's gotta be um, that right there. We can actually double click it, I think. I don't have, double click that. Takes us here, I'm gonna get rid of the Daniel. We're gonna do, we have access to food item. So we'll do food item dot, so then we have a name. That's a string, so it works out just fine. Command hover over it and you can see it's a string run and this should be it um, there we go tofu scramble tofu scramble uh, vegan breakfast platter vegan breakfast platter so you'll notice you know whatever we click on it just uh, transfers over uh, we could also transfer over other stuff as well 
we could just as easily um, in our nav graph we could add we could select there and also um, we could also do a you know price uh, price that could be a um, double so, but you you can you could do a flow but but the point I kind of want to make is you don't necessarily want to be passing all of these variables from one uh, screen to another screen. What you want to do is, in a sense, pass kind of its identifier. So in this case, it it's we're identifying it by its name at least for now. And instead of passing, you know, um, the price and uh, description and image and stuff, what we can do is we can actually pass just the name, and in our product info. These are terrible names, by the way. I should fix all of these names. That's just like first fragment was kind of for uh, some of these names are just for clarity for um, so you know what they are. But in reality, I'd probably call this like uh, at least add the word fragment to the end. Anyways, uh, point I was making. Oh yeah. So once we receive our product name or SKU here, what I do is I would try to look it up in our um, what we have in I think it's first fragment. I try to look it up in this list. So I'll just look up. Um, I'd look up. Uh, I'd look up. Oh, vegan breakfast platter. So I'd search this list for vegan breakfast platter, find it. Then all this data I just swipe up and get. So I'm not actually passing all of this data over. Just passing that, and that's good enough for us to know that there's only one of those in the list. And just search the list for vegan breakfast platter everywhere and 100 screens in your app, and just pull the price highly rated, that kind of stuff. And in reality is you could have a lot of, you could have, you know, highly rated, the food choices, the delivery fee, curbside, delivery, pickup, location, stores, time. You could have all kinds of stuff. And you don't necessarily want to be passing a, a large amount of data. And um, when we're working with APIs or Firebase or stuff, this will make it a lot easier. I think I'm going to stop the video here. Um, I will, s yeah, this is good enough for now. Going back shouldn't work. Tofu scramble. I guess all we have. Do we have vegan nom? Um, yeah, vegan nom. Um, I haven't clicked on this yet, so this should say vegan nom burrito, and it does. Cool. See you in the next video.